Hey kids, we're here right now today in the second segment of this episode with Lisa Bundy. Hi. Lisa, how you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? Fun fact. Yeah. We went to the same high school. Yes, we maybe did. Maybe a year apart. Yeah. Knew yeah. a lot of the same people. Yep. Never met. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that happens. Uh, it, yep, it was a big high school. We had 409 people in our graduating class. And, and, and pretty much the whole senior year for me was a blur. So if we did meet... You don't remember it. I, I don't remember <laughs> that, That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so you are, your, your handle is the car girl. Ah, yes, I am. I, Popeye said, you know, I am what I am and I'm the best yam I am. <laughs> uh, my son asked me one time, why did you name your business car girl? And I said, well, you know, you just got to own it. It is who you are. Quit trying to make it something it's not. And I <laughs> grew up in the car business and obviously I'm a girl. Well, there you go. There you go. And you moved up like through different phases of the car industry. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. And, and now focusing on uh, uh, you're, you're passionate about the oh. art end of it. Absolutely. And, and tell us a little bit about, you know, how, how art is incorporated into the car business. Well, it, 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 how it started for me was I grew up. In, in the car business, and um, one of the things was we were always looking for something to put on the walls, and since we sold just average cars, Chevrolets, Buicks, you know, Pontiacs, it seemed really mean to put a Ferrari or a Corvette up there, and those seemed to be the only posters or pictures you could find back then. Mm -hmm. I would go to looking for Christmas cards, you know, to send out to other vendors, and I would find Santa in a truck in the snow. I'm in the car business in Florida. So none of that transpired <laughs> for me. So I, since I, I have a minor in studio art, I decided I was going to start taking my own pictures. And so hanging around junkyards, you see the beauty in the curve of the fender or sometimes the patina of the, of the paint or how the modeling of the rust has taken its own patterning. And, and when you look at those elements, just in and of themselves, it is just a beautiful thing. So I just started taking pictures and wandering around junkyards and car shows. So I do shiny, I do rusty, I do shiny. <laughs> I like the rusty better. I do too. We, we were talking earlier, I told you I like the, the rat rods. Yep. And although there are some elaborate rat rods out there, mm -hmm. some really gorgeous ones, you know, with the, the, the paint jobs and everything, but there's also a whole subsect of those guys that just go with the patina. Absolutely. Uh, they're rusted, and, and but they have some really ballsy engines in them. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, as I told you before, I'm not a purist when it comes to the cars, so I'm actually working on a 64 Rambler station wagon, mm -hmm. and it ha it's an automatic. Uh, we had the motor rebuilt, but I'm having power steering and power brakes put on it. Since it is an automatic, you know, if you, well, you remember the old brakes, you'd have to pump them sometimes oh, you yeah. get air in the line. Oh, yeah. I really don't want to tear the transmission out trying to get that baby stopped. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we went ahead and, and put a little bit more on it just to make sure that, you know, you want to start, you want to stop. <laughs> Remember, we were talking about the Rambler. Mm -hmm. I had a 66 Rambler Classic four-door Yep. when I was in the Army. I was at, uh, at Fort Bragg, and, and that was my cruising car. And everybody actually did call it a tank. All my buddies <laughs> did call it a tank. And the thing would really, literally, out there at Fort Bragg, they actually have what they call tank trails. Really? The tanks would go out there, and, and there was big pits that they would drive into mm -hmm. and all. We would go out there late at night after one too many and drive the drive my tank out there and we actually drove it into one of those pits and it went face first down into the pit. Oh my goodness. And then dropped down into it and I swear to God we drove it right back out. Oh my god. Did not get stuck. Did and it had that push button transmission. Oh I love those. Love those. Yeah. Rambler <laughs> Steering and, wheel about that big. <laughs> Rambler and Mopar were the only ones that did the push button. They they were awesome. They, they were, were awesome. They were and, and actually if I remember correctly it was only a two speed. It was just a two speed could, push button. Just yeah. Just yep. one and two. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yep. I saw one. I was at a car show at, uh, I think it was at uh, Meekum's, and I saw one, and I just was, like, mesmerized by it. It just brought back memories. But mm -hmm. just the, the trim. Like, I got into this thing with dashes. I loved 
dashes, you know, just the way they were sculpted and designed. The old metal dashes. Oh, yes. Metal dashboards. Yes, yes. And, and you know, if you study the cars and you study how they um, evolved through that design process, mm -hmm. so much was put into that back then that I don't know that you see a lot of that. Now we're more about functionality. We're more about putting functions in there as opposed to making it a work of art. Right, right. Well, I, I grew up uh, on the north side. Uh, one of the things that, that my father and I did when I was growing up, we worked on engines, mm -hmm. all kinds of engines. He right. actually me used too. to get me lawnmowers to work on. <laughs> that, was a, that was like a challenge, you know. Just Take you it apart get that thing see running. if you can put it back together. <laughs> and and he, was, uh, he was really into building doom buggies. And, we did. And we had those, and, and, and out by the jetties. That's, that's exactly, where we went. Yep. <laughs> it's like we'd take the old Volkswagens, you know. Yeah. With the rear engine. Yep. Yep. And I, it, we 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 went to a place that was an old junkyard way out past Oceanway, Jan's junkyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of what they had was old Volkswagens, and a lot of them, the bodies were completely ruined. Right. So we removed the bodies, and we just bought the frames. Right. We bought the frames with the engines. Mm-hmm. Brought them back to the house, took the motors out, souped them up quite a bit, put headers on them and all that. Uh, and uh, we went, one of the things he had in the old Navy ships, they had the bunk beds. Mm -hmm. And they were actually hanging by chains right. from the wall, and it was this metal frame mm -hmm. around it, round tubing. Right. Maybe an inch, inch and a quarter. There was just a stack of these old metal frames from a Navy ship. Wow. My dad bought it must have been a tractor load of them. <laughs> and he cut all those things up to make the frames for these dune buggies. Oh, wow. He built the frames. All he used was the rear end and mm -hmm. the front end, and then everything else was fabricated. Oh, wow. Had the I-beam down the center, of course, with the shifter in it. Right. And with the, with the shoe brakes on the back, he had a separate lever for each wheel. Wow. He separated the levers. The, the two cables that went to right. the two rear wheels. Oh, that's interesting. He separated it, and we could go flying down the flats at the jetties. And then hit one hit and one spin. Of and spin it around. Yep, yep, that's exactly <laughs> it. So much fun. Oh, yes, yes. I remember uh, uh, another thing. It, well, you grew up on the north side. You know, we used to have bonfires at the jetties. Oh, and, yes. You know, had a lot of fun out there, and you don't see a lot of that anymore. No, and, and just in fixing things, you know, we, we can't fix cars the way we used to do back then. I oh, mean, no. I remember taking my little Volkswagen through the, the uh, inlet at the jetties one night during high mm -hmm. tide, and the water got in and splashed up against the fuse box, which was right underneath, you know, right underneath the dash. And so I didn't know, so some of my lights and wipers and everything quit working, so I start carrying around a box of fuses and sandpaper. I still do. And I'm like, <laughs> stick it in there and twist it around and hope. I, it was a Cinderella car, you know. If, if the lights might not come on, you, you stay out there after dark and the lights might not come on. And, you know, I'm not calling my dad and telling him I'm not coming home, okay? You just figure <laughs> this out. Yeah. But yep. yes, you know, little things like that we learned how to do, and that's one of the things that he taught us too. Mm -hmm. He wanted us before we could drive. He made us change all four tires without the um, floor jack. We had to use the actual scissor jack that came with the car, mm -hmm. and we had to be able to take the take the tires off, change them. And we were girls. Yeah. Um, we had to learn to put on brakes, and we also had to learn how to rebuild a caliper. Mm -hmm. Those were three things he wanted us to learn, and then that way he felt like if we broke down, we weren't at the mercy of anybody that came up and said, oh, it's this or it's that. He wanted us to know a little bit more. <laughs> my dad, my, one of the funny things my dad told me was always, you know, carry, carry some tools in your trunk. Absolutely. Something. I still do. And, and yeah, I do, too, and I have a flare kit and all that, you know, junk. Yep. And uh, <laughs> He handed me this, this little, it was actually an old welder's pouch. It mm -hmm. was a leather pouch, you know, you just roll it up and mm -hmm. tie it, you know. <laughs> he said, this is your tool kit, keep it in your, in your trunk. So I uh, opened it up. It was a pair of channel locks, a screwdriver, a folded up, folded up coat hanger, <laughs> and, 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 and some rolled up pieces of duct tape. Oh my goodness! He said, "That's your that's your that's your repair that's kit. your breakdown toolkit. <laughs> that's your repair he kit." He says, "You can fix everything with what's in that bag." 
That's true. Absolutely. <laughs> it, it may mean not permanently, but definitely it'll get you home. <laughs> I was driving back from a gig. I was playing in a band years ago. Uh, we were playing down in Central Florida, and I still had to be at work out on Blunt Island mm -hmm. the next morning. And I didn't leave the bar till like 2.30, oh, and that goodness. was like, you know, two and a half hour drive. Oh. Halfway up, coming up I-4, just before you hit 95 in Daytona there, mm -hmm. I'm coming up I-4, and the, the pipe, the muffler, fell off. So that thing was super loud. It had oh, a yeah. big V8 in it. You know, it's a big station wagon. I had all my drums in the back and everything. I pulled over, and it was middle of the night, pitch black. There's no lights up and down that strip there. No. Mm -mm. Pitch black. Crawl up underneath the car with a coat hanger and some tape. <laughs> and it took me a while. Right back up. It took me a while, and it was still loud because there was still bleed out from right. it. Right, exactly. It got me back to Jacksonville. By the time I got to my I was living in Arlington at the time. Mm -hmm. By the time I got to the house, I was going to put my work clothes on and then go straight to Blunt Island, you know. Right. Pull, pulling into my neighborhood in Arlington, that thing got really loose. And that was like the, so loud, pulling up in this quiet little, you know, suburb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning, four thirty. <laughs> they didn't like you very much, did they? I didn't time? care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about the art with the automobiles, mm -hmm. you said that you had a, uh, a special technique printing on metal. Um, I actually have them sent out, and I, ha I print on metal. I was printing on metallic uh, paper, which was great, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. Most of these pictures are being used, I mean, you can imagine man caves, um, oh, yeah. repair shops, car lots, things like that. You really don't want something that's beneath glass. You don't want, you know, you don't want to take away from it with a frame. So mm -hmm. being able to print on metal is fantastic because I think it really does transfer the, the patina of the car. You almost, yes. and I print some as large as five feet tall. Mm -hmm. And when you look at something from way across the room and it's five feet tall, it's almost like it pulls you in. You just, mm -hmm. you, you're mesmerized by it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a wonderful technique. I tried many other um, things printing on, and that seemed to be the one that really, I think, did a better job. And, and it seems appropriate, too, since they are automobiles. Absolutely. You know, and you're printing on the metal medium. Right. Uh, and, and They're metal. metal. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and the, the metal prints that I've seen around town and, and other places, mm -hmm. they just do seem to have such depth to them. They do. They really do. I mean, whether they're photographs or, you know, just a print from a painting or, you know. I wouldn't want my wedding picture maybe printed on metal, <laughs> but. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too shiny. But they're great. I have several people who have purchased them to put on, you know, like in a garage setting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with now. People who have collectible cars are now joining these garage communities. Yes. yes. And, of course, you know, they don't just want a poster up there or something like that. Those they want garage condos. Have you seen right. Those? Exactly. Unbelievable. So they want something that's very representative of what they do mm -hmm. or, or, or the cars or that genre. So it kind of works really well towards that, too. <laughs> Fantastic. Lisa, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. Not a problem. Maybe we can have you back in season three. Awesome. What do you think? I'll do it. <laughs> Listen, we've had a great time today. You can find uh, The Contrast Project on Facebook and Instagram. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, share, comment, smash the subscribe button, and hit that bell. Until next time, peace.